Hello again, my name's Paul. Welcome to the channel, Talking Music, where every song has a story and we talk about the secrets of a song, facts, information. Indeed, we get to the story behind the song. And the song in question today is Whitney Houston's I Wanna Dance With Somebody. Now, Whitney Houston was the daughter of jazz vocalist Sissy Houston, cousin to Dion Warwick, and one of the few people in the world who could call Aretha Franklin Auntie Ree. What a pedigree she had. By 23, she was a worldwide superstar. And between 1985, with Saving All My Love For You, her second US release, and 1988, with Where Do Broken Hearts Go, she had seven consecutive number one hits on the US Billboard chart which gave rise to the notion she was even bigger than the Beatles. The Beatles had only ever managed six. And as you can see, one of those consecutive number ones was I Wanna Dance With Somebody, right in the middle of that run. 11 weeks in the US top 20, two weeks at number one, and selling a million in America. In fact, it was her best selling single uh, of the 1980s not just in America, but worldwide too. Now, the song was produced by Narada Michael Walden, who'd had hits himself, most notably I Should Have Loved You. And he played drums on the song. Bass was played by Randy Jackson, who was a very highly regarded session musician and who was to gain great success as a record producer. And Whitney did all the vocal arrangement on the song. Narada Michael Walden wasn't keen on this song at first. He didn't think it was right for Whitney Houston, and he took some persuading to produce it. The persuader was the president of Arista Records and the legendary A&R executive Clive Davis, who had originally discovered Whitney and went on to mentor her. I can remember that first moment when I saw Whitney at Sweetwater's singing two songs in her mother's act and getting that proverbial tingle down my spine when I knew that I wanted so badly to work with her. Right after we signed together, I did go on the Merv Griffin show and I did introduce her because Merv gave me the opportunity of bringing any new discovery onto a show and launching that artist on national television. And so I remember so distinctly when I went on that show and I compared her to the stunning beauty of Lena Horne, to the fiery gospel of a Dionne Warwick or an Aretha Franklin, and that she would be the star for the next generation. When we had seven consecutive uh, number ones, it really was with disbelief. I mean, um, you certainly, know that you're building towards towards a record that you build that you're building towards uh, an achievement a feat a triumph that no one has ever accomplished before so that when we finally had the seven uh, consecutive number one records that no one nobody no male no group no artist had ever had before um, words can't express the kind of uh, um, thrill delight um, pride uh, that this has been accomplished. The song was written by the husband and wife songwriting team who were to have an international hit waiting for a star to fall. Their band name was Boy Meets Girl and they were George Merrill and Shannon Rubicon. Their biggest success to date was in 1986 writing How Will I Know which was picked up by Clive Davis for Whitney Houston and since that time Whitney's career had absolutely skyrocketed. Clive went back to them and asked them to write another, especially for Whitney. They were at the time making their Boy Meets Girl album, and the first song they offered was turned down by Clive, who said it wasn't suitable, and he pressed them to come up with something quickly, as Whitney's last single had been some eight months previously in the summer before. So George and Shannon decided they would write something along the lines of How Will I Know, something upbeat and lively, but yet still to be considered emotional. 
and the result was I Want to Dance with Somebody. It was based on some of their friends' lifestyles at the time, who, when they finished work for the day, wanted to go out with their partner and have fun. They recorded the song in their home studio, Shannon singing the guide vocal, and with Clive Davis having been in town, Los Angeles, for a few days, but flying back, rather than send the cassette through the post, George drove to meet Clive at the airport to hand him the cassette personally. George said, You know, Clive, we're feeling good about this song and we're in the middle of an album, so if you could get back to us quickly on this one, because if you don't want it for Whitney, we'd like it for Boy Meets Girl. Clive listened to it on a Walkman there and then, and as George recalled, Clive said in a friendly way, something George couldn't repeat. But the gist was, I can tell you now, George, you're never getting this song back. And when Whitney heard about the sentiment that inspired the song, she changed the lyrics to I want to dance with somebody who loves me. It went on to be the lead single from the Whitney album, and the incredible success story continued. You know, I didn't expect anything. I had no idea that it was going to be as major as it is, but uh, I, I'm very pleased about it. I sure am glad it did happen. I am. Um, hasn't changed my life much. Um, I'm just busier than I've ever been before in my life, but uh, I'm basically the same. You know, I still think the same as I did before Whitney Houston, you know, ever came about. Um, I feel the same way I do about things, and I still have the same values. The music video was directed by Brian Grant, who had directed How Will I Know, so Clive Davis was keeping the old team that had worked before. But Grant had a tough job this time because the lyrics were about dancing, and Whitney couldn't dance, so he had dancers all around her and kept her movement quite minimal. Whitney always used this song on her tours because she knew it was a fan favourite. It was one she couldn't really leave out because it was one of her most up-tempo songs, and she was the power ballad queen after all at the time, so the song added a certain light and shade to her live performances. The song went to number one in Australia, Belgium, Canada, Denmark, Finland, Germany, Italy, Netherlands, New Zealand, Norway, South Africa, Spain, Sweden, Switzerland, the US and the UK. If you were trying to count them, that was 16 in all. Just goes to show what her worldwide reputation was at the time. And taking into account digital sales, the song went gold in all of these countries and platinum in the UK with three quarters of a million record sales in 1987. And again in the US for 2.8 million sales. Worldwide sales estimated at 4.2 million. Let's have a look at the two most important charts. Uh, the Billboard Top 5 from June 27th, 1987. Uh, Whitney uh, going to number one for the first week. She knocked uh, Lisa Lisa and Cult Jam off the top, head to toe. This was the very same day, June the 27th, that the album Whitney debuted at number one on the album chart in America. It was the first time a female artist had done that straight in at number one. And the song went on to become the fourth bestseller in the US for 1987. Uh, Walk Like an Egyptian was the bestseller from the Bangles, of course. And the UK chart... Uh, she was at number one earlier, June the 6th, 1987. It's generally been considered that progress up the UK chart is quicker uh, than it is up the Billboard chart because the UK market, although very important a market, is a smaller market than the US. But she was at number one on June the 6th, 1987 uh, for the first week. Uh, she knocked Nothing's Gonna Stop a Starship off the top. And uh, she debuted at 10, then the second week, two, and then number one. It turned out to be the third bestseller in the UK for 1987. The bestseller was Rick Astley, Never Gonna Give You Up. Like in America, the song was number one for two weeks in the UK. I Want to Dance with Somebody won a Grammy for Best Vocal Pop Performance for Whitney Houston, thus underlining her standing as one of the world's top singers. And the video won a Grammy nomination for Best Music Video. 
Critics had mixed reviews, as usual. Some compared it to a watered-down version of How Will I Know. Well, both songs were written by Merrill and Rubicam. And the New York Times said watching the video was like watching TV while someone fiddles with the colour controls. But the song has had more accolades than critics, most recently in 2015, being voted by the great British public as the nation's fifth most loved number one from the 1980s. Well, she certainly made her mark. Unforgettable. Whitney Houston and I Wanna Dance With Somebody. That's it for another talking music video where every song has a story. Please subscribe to my channel and you'll find there are lots more songs where we talk about the stories, the facts, the secrets, the information about some of the world's best known songs. So until we meet up the next time, and I look forward to it, I wish you well. Till then, bye-bye.